Welcome back. We were listening to an interview with Christy Harrison. If you missed part one, I have good news. You didn't miss anything at all. There's a bit more substance to this one, but not much. Please don't get your hopes too high. Right? Like, I'll just take one example of Marion Nestle, right? I have no idea who she's talking about either. So she, she'll write and talk about things like what to eat, right? And very clearly good and bad food or food politics. And it's like you against the man, right? And, and there's kernels of truth in these texts. And then it's like, you'll see her in this interview and like, well, I believe in a world where there should be potato chips and like enjoy potato chips in moderation, right? But this, this thing that doesn't sound, it's like, well, wait a minute, are potato chips good or are they bad? Because you just went in to say that we're all eating too many chips and they're hyper palatable. And that's why we have fat people in the world. And now you're saying that you believe in a world where we should be able to enjoy chips in moderation. Which one is it? Wow. Those aren't opposites. Just going to get semi-political here for a second to make an example. Feel free to tell me to bite it. I believe the free market should exist, but I also believe that there should be some moderation on it. Some kind of mild socialism would be good for society as a whole. Based on the popularity of Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, it would seem most Americans agree. So back to the original example, potato chips. I believe they should exist, but people should also be taught what Cookie Monster was taught. Me get it! Fruit! Any time food! That's right. Okay? Some time food! I mean, come on. Cookie Monster gets it. There's a lot of, like, gaslighting. Yes. Oofta. That's not gaslighting. Gaslighting is not saying something you disagree with. Gaslighting is where you try to convince someone that they are going crazy. So much gaslighting. And it is that sort of like wanting your cake and eating it too, right? Wanting to be calling out the food system and telling people they're eating the wrong foods. But then when faced with the evidence that people are taking that message and doing harm, that it, t people are taking that to a place of quote unquote extremes, which I really would argue even that message in and of itself is extreme. Even people don't have to take it to an extreme. It's already kind of extreme to say some foods are good and some foods are bad. It's Sunlight is good for you. Too much sunlight is bad for you. How is this hard to understand? Even that messaging will have some people going to extremes and never ever going outside unless they're 100% covered. And other people will ignore it and get sunburned really bad every year. These two groups of people existing doesn't suggest we should do away with the message to moderate your sun exposure challenging people's ability to have peace with food and their intuitive relationship with food that we're all born with. Please provide evidence that people are born with an intuitive relationship with food. I've seen fat babies, and I've seen kids that can't stop themselves from eating candy until they puke, while other kids are bone thin and have little interest in eating and seldom, if ever, overeat. You know what? I kind of feel like she's gaslighting me. But when faced with the evidence that it's harming people, those kinds of messages are harming people, I think the approach from the food systems people is like, oh, no, 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 like, just be chill. Don't don't take what I'm saying to an extreme. I've heard Michael Pollan do that, too. And it's frustrating because it's like, well, are you saying these messages, these black and white messages about food then because those are what sells and you're only sort of dead in it, you know, dampening them down when faced with the evidence that, that they're harmful? Or do you believe? Oh, whatever. As someone recently reminded me, everything in moderation even moderation, Oscar Wilde. Her suggestion that we inevitably get an eating disorder if we learn about moderation and that some foods are healthy, I don't know, feels like gaslighting. Do you actually believe that food is bad, but you're sort of walking it back to try to avoid controversy or avoid harming people or avoid being accused, accused of causing eating disorders? It's just, it is very confusing and very gaslighting. And I don't think, I don't think intentionally, I don't think they're bad people. These people who are, are writing this stuff, Mary Nestle was lovely. I took classes with her. I even got a, or took a class with her. I even got some career advice from her. Michael Pollan was lovely. I interviewed him a couple of times. Like, I think they're trying to do the right thing. I think they just are completely unaware of this whole side of the picture when it comes to people's relationships with food and their bodies. And I think that's true of a lot of like privileged, thin white people who lead this food politics movement this food activist movement. Let's be clear. Christy Harrison and the host are privileged, thin, white people. And I'm privileged and thin and white also, but I also happen to be someone who struggled in my own relationship with food. So I have that window into like the trauma that food policing can cause. Or another way to look at it, she seems to only talk about things from the point of view of someone recovering from an eating disorder and doesn't realize that the messaging you give an anorexic person could be quite harmful to someone who isn't anorexic. We're all dealing with our own issues, but the number of people suffering from eating issues due to restriction 
is quite small compared to the number of people who suffer from obesity in the USA. Sort of need to be talking to each other. I think the food politics movement is built completely outside of and like unaware of the fact that disordered eating exists, that diet culture exists, and so that's to the detriment of of that movement. Because I think it, certainly we need greater food justice and access to food for people of all socioeconomic backgrounds, not because quote unquote processed foods are bad and make people fat, but because everybody deserves access to all kinds of food as a matter of social justice. And if we could approach it that way, rather than making it about certain foods are bad and people don't need to have them and body size is bad, larger bodies are bad, but just about like no, really everybody deserves access to all kinds of food. I think it would be a much better movement. You know, I think it would be a much less harmful movement. That's an entirely different movement. The original movement is talking about teaching people about food and nutrition and how to take care of your body. But she, for some reason, wants to convert that to a government policy to put grocery stores in poor neighborhoods, regardless of whether or not such a thing is possible. They are about totally different things. The fact that she thinks they are the same boggles my mind. So we're pretty deep into this video, and neither the host nor Christy has said what the book Anti-Diet is about. One thing it clearly isn't about is eating healthy food, since that's food politics. But if it turns out that the book is about trying to eat more fruit and vegetables, and other things that make your body feel good, wouldn't that be the ultimate gaslighting? And so, we come to the end of another video. I'd like to thank Hannah McNally, Sarah Ahern, Carl Williams, and MMC for their generous support. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please consider clicking like and subscribe. If you liked it a lot, consider becoming a member. There should be a link in the description. The current schedule is I try to get one Fat Logic video every two weeks, and in between I do somewhere between two to five Fat Logician cringe videos. See ya on the flip side.